Hey guys, James with you today, and today we're going to look at doing the revision mapping of the revision property into our inventor title block and inventor part files, whatever it is. Okay, so we want to use the system property and push directly into the uh, the part files and the drawing files inside of inventor. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check out some of the settings that we've got set up already. Uh, this is a brand new vault that I've got here, so there's nothing in there, it's all pretty standard. Uh, so let's go and have a look at some settings that I've done. Uh, I've only done the basic ones, like setting up a project file and gone and set up my uh, working folders and everything like that. I've really made no other changes to this vault so that, uh, so that we can start from scratch. Now, uh, one of the things um, you will want to look into, I'm going to just take for granted that you already uh, know this stuff, but you may want to look into uh, how to set up your life cycles and categories and all that sort of stuff. Um, we're going to sort of bypass all that today um, in an effort just to get straight into the property mapping side of things. But you'll probably want to know that stuff. If you do want to know about this stuff, uh, Brian Shannon from Autodesk has done a really good video series um, on how to do all that sort of stuff. He's actually gone into detail about how to do this mapping of properties, revision property as well. Um, but it is based on a 2010 version of Vault, which is um, which is a little bit different these days. So we'll go over it uh, in the newer versions. In order to get around having to set up um, categories and life cycles and whatnot, and uh, and more specifically life cycle rules, what we're going to do is we're going to mark the engineering category as default, so that everything I check into Vault goes and gets assigned a life cycle based on the flexible release lifecycle process. Uh, important uh, note, don't do this on your normal vaults unless of course you know what you're doing. Um, the reason why you wouldn't normally associate the base or the default category with a lifecycle controlled category is because everything will get assigned a lifecycle, um, including things that you may not know are getting assigned a lifecycle, such as your DWFs and whatnot. So um, you don't want your DWFs to have life cycles and things like that because you'll find that um, while you try and release things and it'll have linked problems with DWFs that are not released as well and all sorts of stuff. So just make sure that you're um, using a base category normally, but to get around that today, we'll, um, we'll just use the engineering category as default. Right, so we've got uh, we've got all that set, so that now that when we go and check in a file, and let's just go and verify that this is all working, uh, let's go ahead and just check in a file, make something first, save it, and check it in. All right. Once checked in we'll now see that back in Vault, we'll see their file there has been assigned to the engineering category and been put in work in progress with a revision A. Uh, so that's all, uh, looks like it's assigning the, ca the category correctly and everything. So um, the only thing we now need to do is make sure that the mapping is happening so that this revision number here is being pushed back into the Vault or into the, um, into the file itself. Uh, so let's go back into my administrative tools here. Um, I don't like this part one, part two, so I'm just going to go and activate the default numbering scheme. Okay, so once we're in here, we jump into properties and we have a look at a couple of properties. We've got two of them here. We've got rev number and we've got revision. This one here, this revision, is actually the system property that we want to map. So it's uh, it's actually that one that has A in it at the moment. So the property revision is a system property and that's the one we actually want to do the mapping on. This rev number here is a UDP or a user defined property um, and actually requires no mapping. In fact, the mapping that's already put on this uh, can actually cause problems. So what we want to do is we just want to actually go and get rid of all that mapping in there. You can see there's all sorts of mapping between AutoCAD, Inventor, Inventor DWG. So just to make life simple, I'm going to go and remove all of that so that uh, it's, there's no mapping done on this one at all. Because the mapping that was in there, we're going to use for the revision property. Probably ask us to re-index once we remove that mapping, but that's normal. And the revision here, this is the one we actually do want to map. So let's go into this one and go into mapping. 
and let's do the mapping for the revision system property. And we can do all this just by going into uh, the mapping tools as normal. Uh, you know what, let's just do it from bulk. Okay, so we want to map the system property revision from, I beg your pardon, that was a bit silly, from rev number. So this, uh, this one here is the revision number inside the part file itself, and we're mapping that directly to the revision property. So we go OK, and you can see it's a single direction from vault to document, which is the only option you've got with a system property like this. We don't need to create it because it's always going to be there. And we just want to do one other mapping, and that's the inventor DWG. Um, so I'm going to map that one from a file. Okay, and that one gets mapped to the same property as well. So we go OK on that one, uh, and that's all correct. Uh, just click elsewhere in the screen, and that will accept that property. <laughs> this is actually a bit of a funny, I don't know what's going on here. This happens every single time in 2014, but it actually is correct. So if you go OK and you go back into it, um, it, uh, it it's still correct, so you don't have to worry about it too much. It's just kind of a funny thing that happens. Anyway. Uh, so that mapping is now correct. So we've now got from inventor or from the rev number, we're mapping this property into the rev number and this property into the DWG rev number as well. So we go OK and all that should be good now. If we were to do a re-index, we'd find that this document here is, uh, is non-compliant, which we'll talk about in a minute. Let's delete that one and start again. Jump back into Inventor, start a new part. This time we'll do a cylinder. And OK. Check that in. We've got our first number there, and let's check that one in. All good. And now when we look in Vault, we'll see the file there. The, uh, the first thing you want to do is you just want to go and update those properties on that file. And this will happen the next time you check it out anyway. So when we go and update properties, it will actually go and grab that information from the, uh, from the vault, so the rev A, and put it directly in. Uh, so just a heads up, this actually, I don't know why, but this doesn't happen on the first time. What you should do is you should have the first letter of your, um, of your revision scheme in your template. So this actually should already have revision A in it, which we'll do in a moment as well. Now when we check it back in, we should have uh, everything working correctly and uh, it all should look good. So back in here, we've got our file. It's all compliant and everything like that, which is good. Now if we went and change the state on it to released, it's all locked. And, uh, and you can see it's all working great. Let's do that again. Um, I'm just going to close it out of Inventor. And by the way, I could do all this um, state change through Inventor, and I probably should be, but that's okay. Let's go and do that again. And you can now see we've got the property non-compliance, which actually is telling me that um, the value in there is A, but the value it should be is B. Uh, to do that through Vault Explorer, uh, we can just go up to Actions and Synchronize Properties, and that will actually just go and push the revision B into the drawing itself, or into the model itself, I should say. So let's go and Synchronize Properties on that. Now updated, everything looks good. Let's go and open up that file in Inventor. Here it is there. And, uh, and in my Properties, I should now see revision B. Let's do that one more time just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke. So let's uh, change the state on that document, put it in released. You can see it's now locked. Let's change it back to work in progress, which will obviously bump the revision. And uh, in Vault, we should have a property non-compliance in here, which we do. Uh, to update that from inside Inventor, 
rather than doing the synchronized properties that we did just before, we can go and say update properties and that will go and update the properties which should now be reading revision C and it is. So that's, uh, that's how to do the mapping on that side of things. Just as a rule of thumb and let's, um, let's just check that back in and let's put it into a drawing just so that we all see the, the drawing working as well. Uh, so you can see no addition in um, in the title block just yet. Uh, by the way, that is being mapped from the drawing property revision number, which is what we mapped before. So there's no value in there, nothing. As I check it into Vault, and again, uh, this is actually pretty important. That should already have A in there in the title block. So let's check that in. Okay, uh, and if we can click update properties, we should get the A in, put in there. Check them in, and all good. Let's release this document here. Change state on that document. Released. Let's change state on this document. Released. Oops. Let's change state on it again. Back to work in progress. Update properties. We've got B in there now. So that's how the revision number gets pushed from Vault into the document itself. The trick here is get rid of all that rev number mapping and also have your title block with the first revision number um, assigned to it automatically. So don't, uh, don't have it blank when you first start a new drawing. Put the revision number in there at the start. Uh, and then you won't have any problems at all. All right, thanks very much for watching. See you later.